What makes a country rich? Is it their natural resources, their workforce or their economic policies? Perhaps it's a combination of all of them. One country that stands out for its economic success is Singapore. Their GDP per capita have grown exponentially for $500 since its independence to a staggering $70,000 plus and it's expected to reach $100,000 by 2027. Despite being a small island city-state with no natural resources, Singapore has become one of the wealthiest countries in the world. No other nations have managed to achieve 130x growth in such a short time. And how did a slum nation become fourth richest country in the world? Let's have a look. Singapore date back to the 3rd century AD. However, it wasn't until the 14th century that the island was established as a trading center. At that time, Singapore was a part of Malay Archipelago and it served as a strategic location for merchants traveling between China and India. The British established a free port, which allowed goods to be imported and exported without the imposition of tariffs or other taxes. These policies helped to make a Singapore a hub of global trade and investment, and it attracted business and entrepreneurs from around the world. However, fast forwarding to 1965, Singapore declares its independence from Indonesia after centuries of colonial rule and tumultuous merger with Malaysia. Singapore was the smallest country in the Southeast Asia. At the time of independence, Singapore faced significant challenges, including a lack of natural resources, a limited land area, and extreme poverty and violence. They had no industries, the unemployment rate was high, and fragmented society with diverse ethnic and linguistic background. Two-thirds of its population lived in slums. However, the government led by the late Lee Kuan Yew, who was Singapore's first prime minister, and is widely regarded as the founding father of the modern Singapore. He led the country from its independence in 1965 until he stepped down in 1990. And during this time, he oversaw a period of rapid economic growth and development. Singapore's success was Lee's unwavering focus on economic development. He recognized that Singapore was a small and resource poor nation, and that is the only path to prosperity through trade and commerce. He implemented a range of policies designed to attract foreign investment, promote entrepreneurship, and boost exports. From 1960 to 1990, the country's GDP grew at an average rate of 6.5 per year, and its per capita income increased from just $500 in 1960s to over $10,000 in 1990s. Singapore also became a major player in the global economy. With a thriving financial sector, booming manufacturing industry, and a highly skilled workforce. Of course, there were challenges along the way. Singapore faced serious economic setbacks in the 1970s, when a global oil crisis and recession led to high inflation and unemployment. However, Lee's government came up with a bold policy measures, including wage freezes and price control, that helped to stabilize the economy and set the stage for the future growth. Lee Kuan Yew's leadership played a pivotal role in Singapore's development and success. He passed away in 2015. His legacy lives on in the institution and values he established, which continue to shape Singapore's development. Today, Singapore is one of the richest, advanced, and competitive economy in the world. It is operating a second-largest port and one of the business-friendly countries. Sounds like a perfect country. It's definitely not. As of today, Singapore is still struggling with problems such as very high cost of living, limited political freedom, income inequality. So what we can learn from Singapore's success? Firstly, we can see the importance of strategic location in attracting global investment and trade. Secondly, we can see the value of investing in education and creating a highly skilled workforce. Thirdly, we can see the importance of innovation and technology in driving economic growth. Finally, we can see the significance of investing in infrastructure to facilitate the movement of goods and people. As we look to the future, it's clear that these factors will continue to play a critical role in success of countries around the world. By following Singapore's example and investing in these key areas, we can create a more prosperous and sustainable future for all. That's it for today's topic. Hope you like our videos. If you like this and want to know more about interesting topics, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe.